Hi everyone. Um, so today we start off with the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, so the convention is the chapter number and the verse number. There are 18 chapters. And uh, so this is going to be 1.1 Bhagavad Gita BG 1.1. And we're going to go into that. So before, um, th this was a, a, a pretty fun thing for me to start with because I, I was able to understand it yeah and it, it was fun i'll explain so um let me explain the setting first for those who don't know um how the bhagavad gita is set where it's set what the context is let me give you a little bit of a context for what's going on so there was a king so i am not very i'm not the perfect person to explain like to know all of the details i'll tell you the level that i know at the high level information that i have and um, you can read it up there's there's tons of information on the internet and tons of people who would know a lot more than i would so you can refer to them i'll just give you a basic overview based on what i know so there was a king he had two sons the in uh, the earlier days it was uh, uh, the eldest son of the king became king and then the eldest son of that became king so it was just a that's that's how it happened so this king had two sons the first the eldest son's name was dhritarashtra and the uh, younger son's name was pandu dhritarashtra he, he although he was the eldest son he was blind so he was not able to become king because he was not able to see so the younger son pandu became king now dhritarashtra had 100 sons and pandu had five sons dhritarashtra's eldest son his name was duryodhan and he was not a good person he was he did pretty horrible things and uh, he wanted to become king even though pandu had become king and so ideally it was pandu's eldest son whose name was yudhishthir he needed to become king so um, the the war happened because of that. Um, so it was so the Pand so the Pandu's sons were called Pandavas and the um, Dhritarashtra's hundred sons were called Kauravas. So the Pandavas went to the Kauravas and went to Duryodhan and said, "Can you just give us five villages? We'd be okay with that. We don't need to have more. Just give us five villages." And Duryodhan was like very angry and he was like, "No, I'm not going to give you even a nail's the size of a nail's head or whatever." Like he was like, "Nope, absolutely not." So then this was the setting where the Pandavas and the Kauravas were fighting with each other. So we were the, this setting happened the Gita began at, on the battlefield the name of the place was Kurukshetra and so the troops were already assembled and aligned like the, the set up not aligned set up the the troops of the Kauravs and their alliances were there on one side of the thing and the troops of the Pandavas on the other side so they were like both of them the both of the troops like all set and everybody was there everybody had assembled everybody was ready to fight now dhritarashtra was not fighting obviously he was blind and his the the driver i think it was his driver um, of his chariot his name was sanjay so dhritarashtra was given this option um, by somebody to be able to see what was going on in the war and dhritarashtra knew that his son was not good right he knew that his son was doing the wrong thing so he came from a lot of guilt, but he had this really strong pull towards his son. Like it was, a, the, the, it was a conflicting values thing. He wanted, he he wanted his sons to be happy. He wanted, um, so even though he knew that his son was not doing the right thing, so he's like, I don't want to see it. It'll be too much for me. So he gave that seeing ability to Sanjay. So Sanjay was able to. Um, see what was going they were not on the battlefield but sanjay was able to see what was happening on the battlefield and he was able to relay all of that information to dhritarashtra so um this is where the most of the gita um happens on as a conversation between krishna and arjun arjun was one of the pandavas with the five pandavas he was the third son in the pandavas and krishna was an incarnation of god or god himself basically come down on earth 
to help humanity at that time and krishna and arjun were very close so krishna became the driver of arjun's chariot he did not want to fight he was not going to fight but he became the driver of arjun's chariot to be with him to 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 help him out which is a pretty big deal I and mean, he became a driver um so most of the conversation of the gita happens between krishna and arjun but the first verse is happening with is a conversation between dhritarashtra and sanjay so the first verse is saying dharma okay so i'm going to be reading from um the chaitanya charan prabhu's website which he has gotten so the he the verse is there and then the translation word by word is also there on this website and he has gotten that from shila prabhupad's web book uh, bhagavad gita as it is which i've also linked in the description so everything is there in the description you can read so um so i'm going to read the actual verse and the translation word by word word uh, to word and hopefully the way i will say it will make sense to you i'll try to make it easy to understand people who speak hindi will find it a little bit easier because there'll be some familiarity with words but even people who don't hopefully i'll be able to like i'll try to do as good of a job so that you kind of kind of follow so um okay so the verse is dhritarashtra uvacha so dhritarashtra is saying dharm kshetre kurukshetre samve samveta युत्सव मं का पांडवाश्च किं अकुर्वत संजय सो धृतराष्ट्र सेज धर्म क्षेत्रे कुरुक्षेत्र द फर्स्ट वर्ड ऑफ द गीता द फर् वेरी फर्स्ट वर्ड इज धर्म ना आई विल एक्सप्लेन द चैतन्य चरण प्रभु गोज इन टू ग्रेट डीटेल अबाउट हाउ सिग्निफिकेंट दैट इज एंड आई विल एक्सप्लेन अबाउट दैट एज वेल सो वट धृतराष्ट्र इज सींग इज kurukshetra is the name of the place where the war took place so he kshetra means place and kurukshetra is the name of the place so what dhritarashtra is saying is in kurukshetra which is the place of dharm dharm kshetra kurukshetra in kurukshetra which is the place of dharm samveta yuyutsava samveta is assembled yuyutsava is those desiring to fight so all of those people desiring to fight who are assembled there eager to fight or desiring to fight so in kurukshetra in the place of dharm all of those people who are desiring to fight who are ready to fight mama kaha pandavas chaiva mama kaha is my sons and pandavas chaiva is and so my sons and pandu sons so all of those desiring to fight in the in kurukshetra the place of dharm all of those assembled desiring to fight my sons and pandu sons now he is very clearly differentiating between these are my sons and those are pandu sons like there is there is a clear affection there for his own sons kim akurvata sanjaya kim means what akurvata did they do sanjaya means o sanjay so o sanjay what did they do what did they do after so he's he's like saying in kurukshetra the place of dharm my sons and pandu sons who are all assembled they are all desiring to fight o sanjay what did they do that is the the um basic meaning of this so now the dharm the explanation of the word dharm he is explained so beautifully i don't have um, right now i don't know how to do the screen capture and do the webcam from the thing so if i could once i figure that out then i will be able to point out like where on the screen that paragraph or like whatever i'm looking at so that it will be easier for you guys but right now i'll read it so this is on the geeta daily.com website um the link is posted in uh, below in the description and he has about 10 plus articles on just the fir- just the first verse and he has a like audio recording on soundcloud for so he has two different websites so both of them were like were amazing <laughs> just all of the all of the content that he has he's he's he puts a lot of content and a lot of thought into every verse and to everything so this is one paragraph that really um resonated with me that i'm going to highlight 
so he explains what dharm means and uh, so what dharm what he says is dharm is a set of activities that is natural to our spirit set of activities which is natural to our spiritual identity so how i understand it how i interpret it is our spiritual identity is our soul and so it is a set of activities it is what our soul what is natural to our soul so it is basically what is the right thing to do what is the right course of action for us what is what is what is natural to us what is what do we what are we and who are we and what do we do and what is the right thing that we do so he explains that the dharm of fire is heat and light the dharm of water he doesn't say it like this but the dharm of water is to you know support life and to quench thirst and uh, so the dharm of us we our spiritual identity is our soul and so the our dharm is to love and serve god I, our dharm i will say let me break it down our love uh, our dharm is to love god so what is love um what what uh what defines love so now there there are many different ways of of doing this but essentially love is getting out of our own head and out of our own ego and out of our own selves and doing something for the other person love is service so if our essential nature is to love and serve god then that is our dharma is to love and serve god now there is an example that i want to give from my personal life which um which i really um which, which ties in very beautifully with this so about 5 years ago in 2018 there were five of us girls that had gone to grand canyon to hike in grand canyon so i mean it it's obvious right we all have different strengths we have all we all have different skills so every one of these girls were bringing in their different strengths and different skills but there was one thing that i hadn't quite understood to that depth at, until that time and that was that every girl was bringing their own unique ways of love to be to people now i know people talk about the five love languages and i think that is just so so uh, simplified like it's it's we have a lot more than just five ways of loving people there are billions there's as many like in, so anyways each one was bringing different ways like one person was um very much in like food like she was just taking care of the food and one person was just carrying like a lot more she was than more most of the other people she would like if she would see someone tired she'd be like okay let me carry that also and let me carry that also let me carry that also so everyone was bringing in their different ways of loving and for a moment at that time i felt like i don't know how to love like i need to learn this i don't i don't i'm not i'm not a loving person like i don't think i know i'm not that i'm not a loving person but i have such a long way to go because i don't know how to love and that while well, that is true but i i felt really bad at that time like i was like and i i realized later on that a lot of people feel that way it's not just me but i i felt it at that time i was like i'm not providing i'm not carrying people stuff and i'm not doing this much about food and and there were other things which i'm not remembering but everybody was bringing in stuff and i'm like i don't know how to do this i don't know what's going on but over the next few days i realized that i do have i do know how to love it's just my way is different and everyone's way is different everyone has their own unique way of loving it's not just that everyone has their own unique way of fears and their own unique um skill sets and all of that all their own unique you know cutesies or how how they make us smile or how they make us laugh and joke styles and all of that so all of that was there true but also everyone had a unique way of loving and that was and i was a full blown atheist at that time i did not believe in god until maybe a year and a half ago or maybe a little more i don't know so i was yeah full blown atheist i was like but i saw okay that everybody has different ways of loving and i stopped beating myself up i was like yeah i have my own way of loving so um recently a few months ago somebody mentioned this which tied in very beautifully to that which ties into this um he said that god loves us because we bring our own unique 
flavors to um, to God. We provide we provide different things, different ways of bringing pleasure to God and bringing joy to God. So we we have we each provide a unique way of loving God basically and we and God loves us and this is something I have felt so deeply in my life like just how much God loves us I mean every single day there is evidence to me like a lot of evidence to me as to how much love God is showering on me sometimes it's over I'm like I don't even know how to it's it's so overwhelming I'm like I, I don't know how to how to understand it like how is it possible for somebody to have so much to have so much love for me and uh, for us so i uh, i kind of so i realized that i mean god obviously is not just loving me god is loving every one of us and god is loving every one of us very intensely so and this is why because we each bring our own unique flavor of love or, or or of our personalities to god and we all we each provide love and joy to god in a, a unique way and god wants all of us god wants all of us in his life and in his fold because um, then he gets to love us and we get he gets our love so okay so to tie it back into that god is um our dharm is to love god which means our dharm is to serve god and how do we serve god since god loves all of us so much so deeply so intensely so so crazy much the way we can serve god is to serve other human beings or animals or whatever other living beings because we're all souls so the way for us to love and serve god is to love and serve other human beings or other living beings that is what our dharm is our dharm is to love and serve god which translates to essentially love and serve other beings other living beings other human beings other people so this is obviously a very um like this is not related to any religion right like this is our spiritual nature and every religion talks about that and every every personal growth talks about everyone talks about that that our dharm is to help people and to love people that's our nature that is our um it's a set of activities to love and serve which is natural it is our nature the nature of our spiritual identity the nature of our soul it is our nature to love and serve god it is our dharma to love and serve god okay um so that is there and yeah so then he goes on and talks a lot about how dhritarashtra is being very partial to his own sons and how he's being very weak and uh, um, all of that but I, I will not go into that so yeah that is verse one um, it's a good beginning starting with the word dharm which is basically setting the tone and setting the pay, setting the context for the entire Gita within the first word and uh, I am excited to dive into verse two and share it with you as well tomorrow hope this was helpful in some way and see you next time bye